and welcome to the show that some people are already beginning to call that news quiz thing on Friday nights. <laughs> In the Gulf this week, uh, confident Saddam Hussein denies that sanctions are having any effect as he makes a public inspection of Iraq's remaining food stocks. <laughs> On her return from Europe, in a desperate attempt to restore her popularity with the Tory faithful, Mrs Thatcher tells the one about Princess Anne and red rum. <laughs> As usual, two teams of game lemmings are here, raring to go, uh, but before they can, we have to do a show. So, uh, first, on my right, someone who in the sun this week was uh, compared to King Edward. Sadly, it was the potato, not the monarch. <laughs> And uh, with Ian, someone who, uh, in his pursuit of the trivial, has come to exactly the right place, Rory McGrath. Thank you. <laughs> and on my left, our other team captain, a football fan and a comedian, and to prove it, he supports Tottenham Hotspur, <laughs> Paul Merton. And with Paul... A uh, former leader of the GLC, Member of Parliament for Brent East and stalwart of the House Yugoslavian Steel Import Committee, but <laughs> you probably know him best as that bloke in the cheese ads, <laughs> Ken Livingston. <laughs> so uh, let's drag ourselves screaming into the first round. Ian and Rory, what's uh, this fearless defender of the proletariat been defending this week? Oh, look, it's Rory. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the fraud squad. Yeah, that's, um, that was Derek Hatton at the it beginning, was. appearing on Style Trial, which was a programme <laughs> that, program that used to go out on BBC One at 7 o'clock on Tuesdays. The programme that now goes out at that time is called Trivial Pursuit. It's <laughs> half an hour of top-notch entertainment for... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. my family. Yes, that, that's absolutely so. BBC One's cult quiz show. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I said cult, by the way. The Fraud Squad are investigating uh, the idea that either of those programmes is, in fact, television. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if I could just drag you back to the question. I that uh, oh. seems dull in comparison. But, it was uh, Degsy Hatton. He, uh, well, he's, he's been he's, selling he's, council property to the council. Uh, well, he's been accused. <laughs> He's in that chirpy Liverpudlian way that only Liverpudlians can get away with. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm prepared to give you... Uh, and he was yes. voted best dressed man of 1969. <laughs> in 1983 this happened. Yes. Yes, all, all very good. Uh, he was, of course, laughably arrested by a clearly misguided policeman this week after the preposterous allegation that he might in some way have been involved in some sort of corruption. Um, in my opinion, I'm sure he's as straight as a dod. As a dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Slight Freudian bugger there. Uh, Smith, so, um, Paul and Ken, uh, what has uh, this bit of film not got to do with this week's news? Um, oh, that, that's the, the panic and, and the, the, the despair that swept across Britain when it was discovered we didn't have a Deputy Prime Minister anymore. <laughs> topical joke. Not funny, but it was topical. Um, <laughs> I'll go if that's no, what no, is no, going no, please, on. Please. I don't have to be insulted. I do that all week. Carry on anyway. Yes, the storms. It's, you were going to say it was the storm that was predicted that didn't arrive. Mm. Fact, <laughs> it's like the right. interest rate cut that didn't arrive. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm going to be partly political tonight. No, 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 I can tell that. If I'm being abused, I might as well get a few ones in. <laughs> I'd like to rephrase uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> It, it's all right, it's after 10 I, I just want to assure viewers, nothing happened in the dressing room. <laughs> well, oh, how soon we forget. <laughs> <laughs> I don't suppose I'll even get a card at Christmas now. Um, a in the old hours. days, you'd have got a grant, Paul. <laughs> And you would have got a story out of it in private <laughs> eye. Well, that's all we've time for on Panorama. <laughs> uh, Do we get yes, a wedge for that, Angus? A couple of hours ago, I <laughs> asked you a question. Um, and it was something to do with the storms, I seem to remember, which uh, I think Paul mentioned at some stage uh, were the storms that never came. Uh, the uh, Met Office's explanation was that their computer's sensory equipment, which is normally set off by a mass of electromagnetic fields, uh, was mistakenly triggered off by Michael Fisher's jacket. <laughs> uh, Ian and Rory, uh, where's this oversized 
pepper grinder mm. heading. Doctors have finally got inside Keith Richards' nose. <laughs> <laughs> Close, close. No, it's actually um, a civil engineer is working on the Channel Tunnel. Inadvertently discovered Colin Moynihan's house. <laughs> it was a two-inch borehole, is how they described it. <laughs> they, they actually bored from the French side to the English side, wide enough to get a whiff of burning sheep, apparently. <laughs> Yes, uh, the hole is quite small, but uh, yeah. apparently it's been specially designed so it's just big enough for Mrs Thatcher to stick two fingers through. <laughs> um, on the English side, workers say they've already caught their first whiff of garlic. On the French side, they've doubtless caught the first whiff of flat Heineken and Scotch <laughs> eggs. <laughs> but uh, two points to you anyway. And finally, in this round, Paul and Ken, what's this uh, meeting of like minds? <laughs> that Paul Gascoigne to judge Crufts. <laughs> no, th th this is the, the new government proposals to change the divorce laws. You've got to have a 12 month cooling off period so that, that Mrs. Satcher's telling Gazza he's got to wait until she's got rid of Dennis, I mean. <laughs> Paul, tell us what it is. Um, this is a, a party for people who have made news during the year. Uh, number 10. <laughs> yes, it is absolutely right, and you've got two points. It's uh, Mrs. <laughs> uh, the Prime Minister who invited a glut of celebrities, or whatever the collective noun is for celebrities, a vacuum of celebrities. <laughs> 200 of the uh, celebrities were invited to Downing Street to boost uh, Mrs. Thatcher's flagging popularity, which is, I think, what you, what you hinted at, Paul. Uh, even more incredibly, they all turned up. Now, uh, <laughs> Gaza apparently told reporters afterwards that Mrs. Thatcher was very cuddly. Well, I suppose compared with Vinnie Jones, anyone's cuddly. <laughs> Which uh, brings a screeching to the end of uh, round one, at which point I can tell you that uh, Ian and Rory are ahead with five, and uh, Paul and Ken are not ahead with four. <laughs> Steam regardless into round two which takes place in the vile world of tabloid headlines. Four cryptic illusions. Paul, here's yours. Secret is out as Miss KGB is spied. Um, this is the wife of Kenny Ball. There was a rumour that um, she had been secreted in an airing cupboard for the last 15 years and he denied it. And then she was spotted down at Safeway shopping, so... <laughs> that's cleared that one up. <laughs> yeah, um, where did you read this? I read this in the Exchange and Mart, actually. <laughs> yes. Is it's it, not strictly um, speaking true. Is it, um, um, the KGB sort of glasnost and all that sort of brighten up their image, have sort of had some kind of beauty contest, mm -hmm. showed one of their, their female agents or whatever. Who's, yes, um, absolutely. Yes, it's the, it's the first ever Miss KGB beauty contest, won by 23-year-old uh, Katja Mayova, who triumphed over her rivals at cooking, dancing, overall loveliness and hand-to-hand -hand combat. <laughs> She won it by telling judges she wanted to work with handicapped children, travel the world, meet interesting people and blackmail them. <laughs> Ken, one slightly uh, closer to home for you. MP gets a busted flush. Now, this is what prompted the Deputy Prime Minister to resign. Uh, because of the rows over Europe, the Prime Minister's degraded him again. She's actually just going to put him in charge of changing the toilet seat, <laughs> doing the plumbing, removing unpleasant blockages and things like that. And finally, after 11 years of being crapped on, it was enough. <laughs> Yes, it's fast turning into question time, this programme. <laughs> um, uh, no, hey, it John, isn't. John Prescott. It is John Prescott. Well done. And what happened to him? Uh, Faulty lavatory on British Rail. He was blasted out of the window, just going <laughs> past <laughs> rugby. He got uh, covered in lumps of um, Geoffrey Archer's next novel. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. Um, it's, uh, it is John Prescott MP who got a surprise soaking when a toilet uh, that he visited on the London to Leeds Express flushed up instead of down, uh, saturating him from head to toe. But uh, personally, I think that anyone who finds the idea of the shadow transport secretary being drenched in a jet of his own effluent, remotely amusing, uh, should be ashamed of themselves. Um, British Rail, for their part, said that the waste pipe had been misconnected. It should have gone straight to the buffet car. <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah. Yeah. Rory. Oh, Rory, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> Rory. Uh, sorry, yes, a pink question. Don't yes. worry, Angus, you carry on reading it. <laughs> How's right. your Dutch? Robo moet weg. Well, not, not too hot, then. It's a Geordie expression. <laughs> it's from last year's uh, Newcastle Evening News. It's and translated, I think it means something like, for Christ's sake, Robson, stop picking Terry Butcher. He's got the mobility of a built-in wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go and cock up another team like PSV Eindhoven? Which he did. <laughs> Which he did. It, uh, it is the Dutch club PSV Eindhoven who are uh, suffering from that well-known footballing affliction, Bobby Robson. <laughs> uh, as a result of PSV's uh, poor performances, the Dutch press have picked up where the English press left off. And I'm sure it won't be long before we find out what the Dutch is for Robbo shagged my wife. <laughs> Ian, a theological conundrum for you. Uh, God has sent three poll tax demands. I suppose three is for um, the Father, Son and Holy Ghost, who, uh, <laughs> who obviously live in the same house. <laughs> uh, <laughs> presumably addressed to Trinity Crescent. I don't know. Well, I mean, I can give you two points for that, because you're absolutely right. It's Lambeth Council who sent three poll tax demands of £521 each to the Church of St John the Divine in Brixton, addressed to God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Well, now we find ourselves at the foot of round three, in which we show each team a hastily slung together compilation of disparate film clips that together encapsulate a major story of the week. Ian and Rory, what's all this about? Mmm, well, it's a George Harrison album. <laughs> There's Andrew Neil playing Space Invaders. There's Donald Trelford busily editing his paper. There's, There's Edward Heath. <laughs> Colin Moynihan. Oh, yes. Ah. Pamela Bordes, that's Black Rod. That hasn't got anything to do with it. <laughs> I think it's an advert for the Bengal Brasserie, only 200 yards from the city. <laughs> this is, I do actually know the answer to this story. This is a new oh. film that is being made to follow the success of International Gorillas. Oh, that's right. Which I'm sure you saw. <laughs> no? A fascinating film about Salman Rushdie, mm. in which he was in the middle of a Jewish conspiracy to um, topple Islam. And, um, it's the same plot as Mary Poppins. You've got it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is a new film which they're it's making. It's about Pamela Bordes. It's called The Good, The Bad and The Ugly and The Tiny. <laughs> Mentioning no names. <laughs> it is. And yes. they're going to get um, some very handsome Indians to play Andrew Neil, Donald Trelford and um, um, the other one, Colin <laughs> yes. Moynihan. Absolutely right. Yes, two points to you. In the new film, uh, Andrew Neil and Donald Trelford uh, are being portrayed as Pakistanis, and Colin Moynihan is not only being portrayed as a Pakistani, but as a tall, gangly, dim-witted Pakistani. <laughs> Which is, of course, ridiculous, because uh, Colin Moynihan is neither tall nor gangly. <laughs> um, <laughs> Paul, Paul and Ken, a rather sinister collage for you. Shake up at Channel 4. Cabinet meeting. Um, Jeffrey Dickens has put his clothes back on. Um, <laughs> that's the Beatles. Um, C and D. I must be on it somewhere. Look for me. Look for me. That's, is that you there? <laughs> yes. But that's, no, that's me with the, the glasses. Uh, Sky Television's new program. Um, Care Bears. Um, fun with magnifying glasses and potatoes. Uh, this is um, somebody's come out with all these things. Care Bears, Beatles, video games are all part of Satan's. Uh, culture and um, if you get involved in these then you're the spawn of Beelzebub. Yes, absolutely right. A list has been drawn up by a Christian association of subjects which can open the way to Satan. Uh, the list includes, uh, as you saw there, Space Invaders, Superman, The Beatles, Oriental Rugs, uh, the World Council of Churches, uh, those sadistic manifestations of evil Care Bears, <laughs> Under or Over Shepherding, whatever that means. <laughs> And uh, Mr. Harry Edwards. Not quite sure who he is or what Harry's been up to, but uh, he's on the list, so there you are. <laughs> so, at the end of that rather baffling round, uh, Ian and Rory still have a rather comforting 11, and uh, Paul and Ken have a rather troubling 10. And so we move on uh, to our trip down memory lane, that is our archive round, as we wallow in the golden nostalgia of times past. And having lifted the mood, I shall now shatter it by showing you this. Ian and Rory, uh, who can it be and where? You start off from London as if you're going to the moon, 
You arrive at Peterborough at absolutely full speed. They then take off three carriages from the back and they put a horse and cart on on the front, I think. <laughs> then they trudge you up as slowly as they can. And I'm sure you've all experienced this. They stay in the stations as long as they can. They troop out as slowly as they can and they get you here as late as they can. Do you know, when I first came, I thought you all lived in caves. Any idea? It's somebody modelled for Picasso, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, they just scrambled the picture of it. <laughs> that is Geoffrey Archer, in fact. He's talking about railways, about which he knows a great deal, having handed over £2,000 in notes to a prostitute on a railway station. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> OK, well, you say it was uh, Geoffrey Archer. Let's have a look and see if you're right. Do you know, when I first came, I thought you all lived in caves and had woe. I couldn't believe it we took so long to get here. Hmm. Isn't he gorgeous? Yes. In 1969, uh, when he was gratuitously abusing the people of Louth, who then promptly elected him. Uh, so I'm afraid they only had themselves to blame, really. But uh, Paul and Ken, no trophies for guessing who this is, but uh, what's he so cross about? The one irony, the one irony, is that they're going to do it in the hall, knowing the ones above all else. The resounding echoes of land and hope and glory. What a travesty. Uh, I guess he's talking about the Albert Hall. Was Land of Hope and Glory and the Hall. Yes. So well, is um, some, something going on at the Albert Hall, like, I don't know, alternative Miss World or something? I, I'll give you a point for the Albert Hall, but no one's actually got yes, what he was referring to. He was Ian. referring to a shareholders meeting. Heseltine resigned shortly after, as it was called the Westland Affair. Yes. It was very, very dull at the time. <laughs> it and it's getting vague. more boring. <laughs> yes. And the Indians are going to make a film about it, apparently. <laughs> It's and Leon Britton's it? part will be taken by Geoffrey Howe, who's looking for work. <laughs> From question time, we seem to have slipped into Open University. But, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, absolutely right, it was Michael Heseltine. Of course, his outburst uh, led him to quit the Cabinet and form his own pressure group in Parliament, or as it came to be known, the Gang of One. <laughs> Do we think he'd make a reasonable successor to uh, Mrs Thatcher? Because he's a very Certainly, pretty man. Certainly, he's blonde you know, and mad. <laughs> So, a quick, uh, quick check on the score, and, uh, well, Ian and Rory are forging ahead with 15, Paul and Ken are struggling to keep up with 12. I want a block vote. I want a block vote. Uh, and so, ignoring Ken, we surge lustily <laughs> into our odd one out round. Four ugly mugs each. The three of them have something in common. Paul, an incongruous bunch for you. Jonathan Ross, mm -hmm. Archbishop Runcie, Richard Branson, and Geoffrey Howe. <laughs> the former Geoffrey Howe. Um, Geoffrey Howe's the only one who'll be in a job centre next week. <laughs> <laughs> well, possibly true, but it's not the answer. Um, Jonathan Ross is the odd one out because all the others have been appointed to jobs by Margaret Thatcher. Because Archbishop Runcie, Archbishop of Canterbury, is appointed by the Prime Minister. Um, Richard Branson became the sort of uh, minister Sweet for litter, or whatever it was. and Geoffrey Howe was... Um, he know. was appointed by getting in a bit of a bait and saying, yeah. I want to be deputy. Yeah. I'm prepared to give you a point for that, or it's not actually the answer we were looking for. It wasn't quite as, uh, as intelligent as that. It was slightly <laughs> sillier. It was actually because uh, it's Archbishop Runcie, because all the others have appeared in public without their trousers. Uh, at least we assume that uh, Runcie wears trousers, can't really see because he wears a skirt most of the time, but uh, Jonathan Ross has uh, conducted an exhaustive trouserless PR campaign this week. Uh, Richard Branson was pictured in the sun recently, sharing a joke and indeed a pair of suspenders with one of his employees. And uh, this week, eight years ago, Sir Geoffrey Howe had his trousers stolen on an overnight train, uh, prompting a well-meaning backbencher to remark, I am thrilled about the loss of your trousers because it revealed your human face. <laughs> Yes, but Geoffrey Howard wasn't in public about any trousers on, was he? He wasn't he running up and down Waterloo Station, <laughs> his bare <laughs> bum sticking out of his underpants. I'm told he was uh, being he offered was money by other members of the Conservative <laughs> Party. <laughs> <laughs> he did have no, to it wasn't. I'm sure I'd have remembered oh. that. Um, Ken, a slightly easier one for you. <clears throat> Richard Crossman, <clears throat> Queen Elizabeth II, Degsy, <laughs> and Hitler. <laughs> Obvious similarities in the well, last two. It has to be the Queen because the other three are all repulsive egomaniacs. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I, they, the other three have all you, written books. You wouldn't be biased at all. No, no, no. The other no. three have all written Ken books. Ken the monarchist. There's that. <laughs> <laughs> When she opened the Thames Barrier, we got on like a treat, you know. But anyhow, the other three... Why are you so rude about her now, then? I know, but no, I'm saying the other three are repulsive egotists. Okay. The Queen all is right. the nice one. The all other right. three have written these dreadful books which prove they were right. They had all the answers to the world, you know. A mine camp, the Crossman Diaries, and the thing about from Degsy about my night with the starlets, or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, Richard Crossman is the only one of them not to have appeared on Style Trial. <laughs> I missed that episode of Star Trek when they had the Queen on. Um, <laughs> I saw the one with Hitler on it. It wasn't very good. <laughs> he, he hardly got anything right at yeah. all. <laughs> it's useless, isn't it? It is the Queen. Uh, you're right. And I'll give you. Uh, I'll give you a point for that. It's virtually correct. All the others have had their diaries or alleged diaries published in the Sunday Times. <laughs> but you can imagine the Queen's diary. Got up, had breakfast, walked corgis, uh, had lunch, walked corgis, had dinner, walked corgis, went to bed, bonked the Duke of Edinburgh. <laughs> Watched Prisoner Cell Block H. <laughs> Met the delightful and charming Red Ken at the Thames Barrier. <laughs> Rory. Uh, yes, love. Uh, four world leaders for you. Saddam Hussein. Yes. John F. Kennedy. Correct. President de Gaulle. <laughs> and Doddy. Yes, you got all those right, Angus. And two points to me. Uh, not quite as obvious as you might think. In no, fact. it's not. It's difficult, that. Um, I think it must be Saddam. He's the only one that hasn't died. It's not... <laughs> not Ken quite that the simple. Hippodrome. Oh, right. Yes, I remember that night. Uh, no, nothing to do with that. Kennedy is the only one to have admitted in German that he was a donut. <laughs> Actually, no, I've suddenly decided what this is. Uh, well, no, it's, it's, all very it's an airport untrue. question. It is an airport. An all airport. the others yes, yes. have an airport named after them. Apart from... Apart from... <laughs> um, Ken Dodd is Innocent Airport in Liverpool. <laughs> Two points, well anyway. Done. Well done, Ian. Well and finally, Ian, your, your question. Your no Robert Maxwell for you this week. Uh, but uh, try these four for size. That's a disappointment. Mm. Bill Shatner. That's, uh, Bill, yep. Shatner. <laughs> Bill Shatner. <laughs> Bill Shatner. Bill <laughs> Shatner. Captain Kirk, uh, Lord Denning, Cher, and Arthur Scargill. Now, this is a plastic surgery question. It is, it is. <laughs> it's a breast thing. It's a breast thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Only one of those persons... <laughs> Has them? Yeah, no, um, Captain Kirk hasn't had a breast implant. <laughs> Cher has Scargill and Denning and a pair of tits. <laughs> it is to do with the Give cosmetic us a surgery. Um, Hair? Yes. It is how. Well, then, uh, Captain Kirk wears a toupee. Good. Allegedly. Amazingly. He also wears a corset, in fact. A corset? Yeah. Not many really? people know that. You'd never know, would you? Um, <laughs> Lord Denning hasn't got any hair. He had a wig. He had a wig. He had a wig yeah, when he was well. on the bench. Yes. A and in other times as well, I've heard. Yes. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you after, but next week's issue. Yes. Cher wears a wig? Cher, That's uh, a guess. Well, uh, she, well, the wig is real with Cher, but the body is artificial. Right. <laughs> and and course... Scargill hasn't had a hair transplant, but looks as though he has. <laughs> <laughs> He's the only one who should have had. Yes, that's right. Amazing. Uh, good, which brings us to the end of uh, this odd round. And uh, Ian and Rory are in the ascendant with 20, and Paul and Ken are very much on the cusp with 14. <laughs> and so we leap hysterically into the final deciding round, in which we show each team a set of headlines with one or two words missing. They have to identify the words or provide a better alternative. As is traditional, the team uh, we tactfully refer to as the no-hopers get to go first. <laughs> So, uh, Paul and Ken, your headlines read like this. Six watts in Neil's cabinet. Pack. Six pack. No, no. It, it has to be socialists. Roll plug. <laughs> there are never six socialists in the cabinet, <laughs> Ken. <laughs> well, perhaps you're right. Perhaps, perhaps three. No. Perhaps three. It no. can't be women. There's only three of them. It can be women, and it is. So do yourself out of two points. <laughs> uh, next, I, I want to play Bond, says who? Says Roger Dickie Moore. Davis. No. <laughs> Derek Hat, Derek Hat, Aston now. Villa. <laughs> <laughs> Someone Dust, even Dustin Hoffman. Yes, is correct. Dustin said it. Next on the spot finds for Cecil Parkinson. Cecil Parkinson. <laughs> <laughs> no, sexually not abusing Parkinson. farm animals. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is only when they do it on the train without the ticket. 
Uh, you need yes. a ticket for that sort of thing, then. And no, I think is uh, <laughs> the Fair answer. Dodgers. Fair, fair Dodgers, Dodgers is correct. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fair Dodgers. happy to say. And finally, uh, Gorbachev's wearing what? Bulletproof vest, I should imagine. Gorbachev. No. Uh, wearing out? Less likely than that. <laughs> I know what this is. Gorbachev's wearing a tiny purpley red sou'wester on his bald pad. <laughs> <laughs> it is in. It is in fact tights. Uh, uh, Ian and Rory, your yeah. turn. Tory MPs to what on dogs? Tory MPs to model themselves on dogs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, this is Goes down with, well um, with the Prime Minister, that. Oh, I know what this is. It's, uh, it's something to do with the dog registration thing, isn't it? To rebel, I vote. think it was. Mm, vote is correct. Uh, vote. Well done. Yeah. Paul leapt in there. Yeah. Uh, next, Bush. I have had what? Petula Clark. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Quayle. <laughs> Paul obviously knows something we don't. Enough. It's all untrue. Enough. Enough. That's right. Enough is correct. Oh. Next, teach the police to what? Break dance. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the ethnic um, drive. Yes. Uh, yes, it's, it's not true. No, I didn't think it was. Smile. Uh, interrogate is the right answer. Yeah. They're uh, rather good at lastly, that. And <laughs> lastly... The what Cecil just can't forget. The one minor it's... incident in a lifelong <laughs> career of... <laughs> It's actually, in a word, it's actually the elephant Cecil can't forget. The story is, in fact, the right answer. The story that Cecil can't forget. Never heard it called that before. <laughs> <laughs> and after that pulsating climax, the upshot of it all is that this week's scapegoats are, well, they're Ian and Rory, who would have thought, with 22. And this week's heroic victors are Paul and Ken, with 24. So, after that late rally, congratulations to our winners and uh, patronising condolences to our losers. But uh, that's not quite it. Good news for the government's electricity privatisation plans as Keith Richards and Ron Woods of the Rolling Stones agree to help out with publicity. <laughs> And finally, following rumours at uh, Westminster that the reason for Geoffrey Howe's resignation was to spend more time with his family, hopes are expressed that Cecil Parkinson will resign to spend more time with all of his. <laughs> <laughs> Good night.